Hey everyone, today I have another water cooling guide for you. I'm going to be installing a pump into the Coolants RP401X2 reservoir. Now this is a single 5.25 inch bay reservoir. It's a dual reservoir and it fits dual pumps. I've actually done a review on this reservoir recently. I'll put a link up on the screen. Also, I'm going to be setting this reservoir up for serial pumps, which is dual pumps in a single water cooling loop, using this optional extra which you can purchase separately for this reservoir. Now, the pump that I'm installing into it is the Swiftec MCP35X, and it actually already has a custom pump top installed onto it, a bits power pump top. Okay, so the first thing that needs to be done, I need to remove the pump top from the pump. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a custom pump top like this one, or if it's the stock pump top, it needs to be removed for the pump to be installed into this reservoir. The other thing is, this is not the only pump that fits into this reservoir. I'm not going to go over the whole range of pumps that fit, but Basically, if it looks similar to this pump, if it has a similar or the same form factor, then it'll fit into this reservoir. The reservoir is actually designed for, because it's a coolants reservoir, it's designed for the coolants PMP400 pumps. There is screws on the bottom of the pump, and they just need to be undone. There's four of them. Okay, so there we go. Now the pump top comes off and there's an O-ring. This O-ring is extremely important because it actually obviously seals the pump and prevents leaks. Now this, the reason that this O-ring is pink, it's actually supposed to be UV red, is because it's a custom bits power O-ring that I've installed. Normally they'll be black. Okay, now you get some screws with the reservoir and they're for installing the pump. Okay, now you can see here one side has a blank on it. So that's if you want to just install a single pump for a single loop. Now I don't have two pumps with me here today so we're just going to be installing the one pump. You've got to be careful now because the pump casing can actually fall off when the pump is turned upside down like that. So just make sure that the casing stays in place. Also make sure that the o-ring stays in place because if this o-ring moves even slightly out of position then you're going to get leaks and the o-ring could also be destroyed. I think the best thing is to hold the o-ring in, in place that you actually lift the reservoir up into a vertical position but you can do whatever works best for you and whatever you find easiest to keep that o-ring in position so the pump needs to be pushed into position I'm just gonna do it slowly the wiring goes up here in this gap so there we go that is how the pump fits into position just hold the pump down firmly until you screw it into position to hold the o-ring in place. Now it's just a matter of tightening up the screws. Remember to use the screws that came with the reservoir, not the screws that you removed when you removed the pump top. Okay, so I'm just gonna tighten up these screws. Now these screws need to be tightened evenly. This is very important, otherwise there'll be uneven pressure on the pump and the reservoir and the casing of the pump and also on the o-ring. Okay, to do this tighten all four screws until you feel them slightly start to grab. Once you've done that, tighten them each half a turn at a time or just, you can even do it by feel, which is usually what I do just so that you've got even pressure all the way around. Okay, and you don't need to put much pressure on these screws at all. They don't need to be very tight. Alright, so now we're going to be installing the Coolants CNT RP401X2 optional extra onto the reservoir. Now what this component is actually for 
is improving flow when using serial pumps. So you get a three Allen key bolts. You also get a 180 degree piece of tubing and this piece of acrylic. So the 180 degree piece of tubing gets installed onto the back of the reservoir here. So you'll probably need a screwdriver to undo these. This gets installed here. So it goes from pump one out to pump two in. So I'm just gonna screw this into place. This was extremely tight for me. You may need to use a pair of multi grips or something like that to tighten them up. Okay, now the next step is to get this piece of acrylic installed into the left hand side reservoir. So I need to pull the face off and the front window off the reservoir, remove the existing acrylic and then install this piece of acrylic in its place with the included Allen key bolts. So here goes. Okay, so I have the window off. It's actually in two separate pieces. The black front plate and then the acrylic window which is approximately five millimeters thick. There is also two o-rings that seal the window so you can see them around each reservoir. You've got to be very careful not to damage those and you're better off just keeping them in place. Alright, now it's time to remove the existing pieces of acrylic. So they're just held in place by two bolts. You can undo the bolts and then slide the acrylic out. Make sure you don't drop the bolts down inside because it will be quite difficult to remove them. Now you can see there's an o-ring which is already in place on the new piece of acrylic. That just slides in. So it was quite difficult to get into position. It's very tight. I found the way I got it in, in the end, was pushing this side in first and then pushing that side in and you do have to apply a reasonable amount of pressure to get it in. So push it down firmly, get it in into position before you start to do up the bolts. So remember to use the included bolts. Alright, now just like when I installed the pump, these bolts should be done up evenly. So again, go through the same process. Okay, now that's it. So now I'm going to put the front window back on. Okay, so the front window has been reinstalled. Just a quick look at the piece of acrylic that was in place the stock piece of acrylic. Again, you need to go through that same process when tightening up the front panel and front window and make sure you put even pressure on it. Be extremely careful not to cross strip the threads. Make sure the bolts go straight in at a right angle and again, they don't need to be tightened much at all. All right, so that's it. This reservoir is almost configured to be a serial pump single loop reservoir so that's a dual pump single loop reservoir so this configuration not only will it give you an extreme amount of pressure and head in a water cooling loop it will also give you redundancy if one pump fails you've got another pump to back you up but of course there's only one pump installed so the next thing that I would need to do is install another pump. To do that, I just follow the same process. So basically what this configuration is doing, it's completely blocking off this reservoir. You can see that a piece of acrylic has completely sealed off this reservoir. So what actually happens, the coolant goes in to pump one in and then it comes out of pump one out just here. It goes straight back in to pump two in and then hits, well it goes through the pump and then hits the back of the piece of acrylic and then comes straight back out again. So it never even gets into that, this side reservoir, but it does get into this side. But the flow still can go between the two reservoirs 
by removing the blocker underneath here. You take this plate off, remove the blocker, and then the flow can go from this reservoir and fill up this reservoir for aesthetic purposes. So that concludes this guide. You will be seeing this reservoir upcoming in a build. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you want to see more.